We have covered a lot of videos inspired by awards featured websites. This time, I turned to Dribble and found something really cool to recreate. I stumbled upon this awesome circular slider with text. Using GSAP, I recreated the scroll animation where the items update their position in real time by calculating the new rotation and position in a circular layout. I also added a hover effect with an image clip mask animation. The main reason for this video is that we haven't covered a layout like this in any of our previous videos. So if you find this helpful, leave a like on the video and if you haven't yet, consider subscribing as well. Just a reminder that you can unlock the access to source code with CodeGrid Pro. You can find the link in the description. Alright, let's dive into the code. First, we need an element to follow the cursor. So we'll give it a class name of cursor. This will be used to render the hover images. Next, we'll set up the navigation bar and footer. In the navbar, I'll include a few links and some placeholder text. The footer will also contain several links and a brief note. We'll then create a container for the gallery. The gallery will hold the text items which will generate dynamically later using JavaScript. That's all we need for the HTML structure. Now let's move on to the styling. First we reset the default margin and padding for all elements and set the box sizing to border box. For the HTML and body, we set their width and height to 100% and give the background a solid black color. We also define the font family. Next, we style the image elements to be absolutely positioned, covering the entire space of their parent with the object fit property set to cover. We are setting the position to absolute because we want to stack every image on top of each. The cursor class is fixed at the top left for now with specific dimensions and a high Z index to ensure it stays on top while ignoring pointer events. Both nav and footer are fixed at their respective positions, taking the full width with padding for spacing and using flexbox to align their content. The mix blend mode property is set to difference for a striking visual effect. Links and paragraphs are styled with no text decoration, a white color and a font size of 14 pixels. The anchor elements have additional padding for their spans. The links in the footer uses flexbox to space out its items with a gap. We then position the nav at the top and the footer at the bottom of the viewport. The gallery is fixed and spans twice the width of the viewport, positioned to start off screen and is set to hide overflow content. Each item inside the gallery is absolutely positioned, centered within the container, with specific dimensions and a cursor pointer for interactivity. Finally, the text inside the item is styled to be full width with a larger font size, uppercase transformation and a white color. Spans within the text have additional padding and a smaller font size. That's our CSS for this project. Now let's move on to the JavaScript part. To provide the content for our animation, I have created an array of objects, each containing the name of a unique interior space. We we'll loop through this array to generate the individual items for our gallery. First, we import the data from our data file which contains the content for our gallery items. We start by adding an event listener for the DOM content loaded event to ensure our code runs after the DOM is fully loaded. Next, we select the cursor element and the gallery container from the DOM. We then define a few constants. Number of items to specify the number of items in our gallery. Radius which determines the size of the circular layout. Center X and center Y to find the center of the screen. And angle increment which helps us place the items evenly around the circle. We then loop through the number of items creating each item dynamically. For each item, we create a div with the class item and a paragraph element to hold the text and a count span.
The text is set from the interiors data and a random count is added. Each item is then positioned around the circle. We calculate the angle for each item by multiplying the index by the angle increment. The x and y positions are calculated using trigonometric functions cos and sin multiplied by the radius and added to the center coordinates. We also calculate the rotation in degrees for each item. Using GSAP, we set the position and rotation for each item. Then we add mouse over and mouse out event listeners to each item. On mouse over, an image is created and appended to the cursor element. The image clip path is animated to reveal it smoothly. On mouse out, we animate the clip path to hide the image and then remove it from the DOM after the animation completes. We then create an update position function to handle the scroll interaction. As the user scrolls, we adjust the position of each item based on the new scroll amount. This creates a dynamic rotation effect as we scroll down the page. Now we need to call update position function initially and add a scroll event listener to continuously update the positions as the user scrolls. Lastly, we add a mouse move event listener to animate the cursor element to follow the user's cursor smoothly using GSAP. The script ties together the HTML and CSS to create an interactive animated circular text layout. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.